Continuing with our carol series, we're going to go to one of the most well-known of the carols, that being Joy to the World. Now, those of you who know me know that I, to a great extent, don't consider this a Christmas carol. Even though we sing it at Christmas, and I have no problem singing it at Christmas, mostly because none of the things that it talks about actually happened. I mean, joy to the world, the Lord has come, let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. That didn't happen. It's going to happen, but it hasn't happened. Or the last verse. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness. Hadn't happened. Didn't happen the first time. Because the first time he came as a baby and a servant. The second time, though, he's going to come as king. So, no problem singing this. In fact, I like the fact that this carol points to who Jesus really is. And I like the fact that this carol will point towards the coming king that we have. So let's learn a little more about this carol. So joy to the world. <clears throat> the basis for this carol is Psalm 98 verse 4, which says, Shout joyfully to the Lord all the earth. Break forth in song, rejoice and sing praises. So here's the story behind Joy to the World. Until Isaac Watts came along, most of the singing of British churches was from the Psalms of David. The church, especially the Church of Scotland, had labored over the Psalms with great effort and scholarship, translating them into poems with rhyme and rhythm suitable for singing. As a young man in Southampton, Isaac had become dissatisfied with the quality of singing and he keenly felt the limitations of being able to only sing these psalms. So he invented the English hymn. He did not, however, neglect the psalms. In 1719, he published a unique hymnal, one in which he had translated, interpreted, and paraphrased the Old Testament psalms through the eyes of the New Testament faith. He called it simply, the Psalms of David imitated in the language of the New Testament. Taking various Psalms, he studied them from the perspective of Jesus and the New Testament, and then formed them into verses for singing. He said, I have rather expressed myself as I may suppose David would have done as if he lived in the days of Christianity, Watts explained, and by this means perhaps, I have sometimes hit upon the true intent of the Spirit of God in those verses farther and clearer than David himself could ever discover. Now, Watts' arch enemy, Thomas Bradbury, was crit greatly critical of Watts' songs, which he called whims instead of hymns. He accused Watts of thinking he was King David. Watts replied in a letter, You tell me that I rival it with David, whether he or I be the sweet psalmist of Israel. I abhor the thought, while yet at the same time, I am fully persuaded that the Jewish psalm book was never designed to be the only psalter for the Christian church. Joy to the world is Isaac Watts' interpretation of Psalm 98, which says, Shout joyfully to the Lord all the earth. As he read Psalm 98, <clears throat> Isaac pondered the real reason for shouting joyfully to the Lord. The Messiah has come to redeem us. The result, despite the now forgotten criticisms of men like Bradbury, has been a timeless carol that has brightened our Christmases for nearly 300 years. So as we see here, joy to the world was the, and even just the songs of, of Isaac Watts were filled with plenty of controversy. We still have some controversy nowadays. There are songs we sing in church. There are songs we shouldn't sing in church. There are people who go strictly with hymns, and there are people who go strictly with praise choruses. And then there are people who find a happy medium somewhere in the middle. The fact is, we've, we've warred over music for a long time. And 
it's not new to our generation. It had happened. Many of the songs that you consider hymns and good songs, like my favorite, Victory in Jesus, was a camp song. And there was a time where you don't dare sing camp songs in church. So Victory in Jesus, which many of you watching this um, at one point or another have sung it in church, and it's one of those old tried and true hymns. Once upon a time, it was not a tried and true hymn. It was a camp song that was only sung at youth functions, and you don't dare bring that into our church. And now look where we've come. You know, the fact is that I don't believe that God stopped inspiring. I believe that God, let me start this again. I believe that the word of God is finished. The Bible is we have it. Genesis to Revelation is inspired and is the word of God and nothing is to be added and nothing is to be taken from it. Okay? I do not believe the hymnal is the inspired word of God. Let me follow this here. The hymnal, there's many of them, by the way, that don't have the same songs. For instance, the 1975 Baptist hymnal had a God of earth and outer space, which the line says, who put the astronauts in space. Can you honestly picture yourself singing that in church? Like, that's just weird. That's the kind of song my brother and I raised our hand to have people sing on Choose the Hymn Night because the song is so ridiculous. Needless to say, in 1992, that song's not in the Baptist hymnal. And in the most recent Baptist hymnal, the song's still not in the Baptist hymnal. And there are other hymnals. There's celebration hymnals. There's Methodist hymnals. There's Presbyterian hymnals. Not all of them have the same songs. Some of the songs in there are the same. I guarantee you'll find Amazing Grace in all of them. But there are some songs you won't find in all of them. And that's okay. Because it's a songbook. Now, the hymnal should be revered and honored. Because it is, they are songs that are based on the word of God. But it is not the word of God. Now to my point. God is no longer inspiring the word of God. But God has not stopped inspiring Christians to write songs about his word. There are a hymn, if you look him up in the Webster Dictionary, it literally says a song of praise to a deity. So there are a lot of songs that fit into that category. My point here is that we shouldn't discount anything that is being written. Now, there are some songs that you that don't need to be sung. We need to follow songs that are following after the doctrine of the Lord and, and in the word of God. Like this one, joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. It's missing a word here. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. As I said earlier, he rules the world. Or the second verse, no more let sin or sorrows, nor thorns impress the ground. The, the, the truth in this hymn is amazing. When we look at it, we see in the second verse, joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin or sorrow grow. I tried this one earlier, so I forgot the word. Nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found. And the last one. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. So today in this Christmas time, as people around you are singing joy to the world, do you truly have that joy in your heart? Have you truly found the joy of the light of Christ? 
Have you truly understood that the joy that, that comes as a result of following after Jesus is greater than anything you could ever have? And then the songs that we sing that are embedded in your head, have you really took the time to really think about what they're saying? Because I think you might find a new reverence and a new awe and a new wonder at our God and our Savior if you were to do that. Father God, I pray that you would impress upon our hearts the words of these carols that we have sung since we were infants. <laughs> that the words would become fresh as many ways that your word becomes fresh every morning. That we would understand as we are singing that, that joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let Jesus be king. And Jesus, while we know you are going to be king one day on this earth, you are king of my life and many who are listening. And I pray that those who are, that are listening, who he, you are not their king, that you would turn their hearts towards you and that they would seek you with all of their heart and that you would drive yourself towards them. And I pray all these things in your blessed, most glorious, most beautiful name, the name that is higher than every other name, Jesus. So may the grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit and Merry Christmas.